Little mood lighting. Shabbat shalom, everyone. It's, it's nice to see you. Welcome to Makom Salah Lakeside. It's a delight to be with you as we celebrate this Shabbat. And we also get to celebrate not one simcha, but at least two tonight, the simcha ot. So we have the opportunity to celebrate a bat mitzvah, which will happen tomorrow as Arden Brin becomes bat mitzvah. And so Arden, I'd like to invite you and your family to come up to light the Sabbath candles. Blessings of the Sabbath candles are on page two, and you can decide amongst yourself who's going to go first. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Shabbat with Rachad Odi. A, a celebration song reminds us that every week we celebrate Shabbat as if it's a wedding. And so we stand when we get to the last verse and imagine the Sabbath bride coming in, bringing with her love and peace and joy to the Shabbat. So page 20. Oh, uh -huh. 
Shabbat bride, the final verse. standing for the call to worship the Barhu, which you can find on page 28. Continue together in the English at the top of page 31, the prayer for the evening. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch ata Adonai, Ariv Aravi. We'll continue with the words of Shema on page 34. Shema Yisrael.
If your name is not Arden Bryn, you can be seated. Arden, come up and join us to lead us in Vahafta, which you can all find on page 36. So you see how the community lifts you up as you're leading and you lift us up as you're leading. So it's good practice for tomorrow. So look mm -hmm. forward to it. And I know you're going to have a beautiful day. Shabbat Shalom. We'll turn to a song about miracles, the Micha Mocha, which is on page 40. It reminds us of the miracle at the sea that, our, that God did for us, for our ancestors so many generations ago. But it also reminds us that there are miracles in our presence, even in this moment. So we thank God now for the miracles that God does for us every day. We sing the words of Micha Mocha on page 40. <laughs> Thank you, God, for that miracle. We ask God to help us become a miracle, to help us become agents of peace and bring peace into the world. So on page 42, we sing the words of Hashkideni, a prayer for peace. Mm -hmm. 
Tefillah begins on page 46 and then continues on the even numbered pages. We ask God to remember us for the sake of all of our ancestors, the fathers and the mothers of Israel. Will you stand for Tefillah, page 46?
seated. We continue with a prayer for peace, Shalom Rav, which is on page 60. And as we turn to that page, we think of places around the world where peace is needed, right here at home in our own community. But we're thinking tonight, especially about the Ukraine. And we'll hear from someone with direct experience in a few moments. But so we pray for the peace and freedom of Ukraine as we sing Shalom Rav on page 60. for a moment to look within our own minds and our own hearts for a moment of prayer or meditation our own words our own thoughts on this sabbath eve
at the beginning of the service, I promised there'd be two simchas, and here comes number two. So it's a pleasure to ask Todd and Robin Weiner to come up and join me here at the Ark, as I have the honor of blessing you on your 25th anniversary. When the temple was destroyed, our homes became the temple, the ministry, and our tables are the replacement for the altar. When we create a home and take a partner, we invite God to dwell among us. That's what it says in the Talmud, a section called Sota, when the couple is worthy, the divine presence abides with you. So God's presence has abided with you to dwell among us, dwell with your family. As you celebrate this 25th anniversary of your marriage, you mark the passage of time since first creating that holy sanctuary together. On this celebration of your anniversary, we pray that God will continue to dwell in your home and in your heart. May you continue to be blessed with love that allows you to endure life's challenges and celebrate life's joy. O oh God, eternal source of blessing, we turn to you in gratitude for the strength and devotion that preserved and sustained Robin and Todd and permitted them to reach this hour. In the midst of family and loved ones, you look back upon the years that have passed since you first pledged yourselves to one another. Many and varied have been your experiences since that day. In joys and trials alike, O oh God, you have been with them. So may you continue to be with them, guiding and sustaining them in years to come. Todd and Robin, may God bless you with health and contentment in the circle of your family, all your loved ones near and far. Together we say, Amen. Amen. I honor to bless you with these ancient holy words from Torah. This is where the hands come. Give a recha of an ivy for recha. May God bless you and keep you. Yeah, Arab and I can have a recha of an echa. May the light of God's face shine on you, gracious people. Yes, Sa'ad and I can have a recha of an echa. May God's face be lifted up to you. May God grant you. One more blessing for the two of you. The Shehefiyam, we thank God for giving us life, sustaining us, and allowing us to reach this moment. We can need some help from everybody here to send love to Todd and Robin. With this blessing on Shehefiyam. <laughs> Let's turn to prayers of healing. As we begin, we start with a prayer for our planet, for all the creatures on earth are in need of healing. Dear God, help us celebrate your awesome creation and all the life on the wondrous planet Earth. Help us feel connected to all of life on this small blue planet. Creator of the universe, help us understand that to master our world means to take responsibility not only for ourselves, but for all the creatures on earth. 
Help us use the power you gave us to build a better living world and not casually destroy the beauty we have borrowed from our children. We are the stewards, your partners in creation. We call on you for help and guidance. Our God, God of our ancestors and of our children. In this code red of climate crisis, help us to preserve and protect life. We owe it to our children, those born and those yet to be. If not for us, then for them, dear God, guide us on our journey. Now we think of those in our community, our extended community who are in need of a healing prayer. We're thinking tonight of Ruth Abado, Ruvain Avraham ben Mordechai Ve'eda, Marty Aronson, Janet Buckstein, Mark Burka, Benjamin Chaim ben Saralea, Lori Kantor, Michael Dalbora, Shlomo David Levine ben Hava, Michael Gold, Don Goldstein, Stuart Goodman, Jim Graham, David Greenberg, Larry Greenberg, Dennis Hernrich, Julian Horwich, Floyd Keen, Alvin Klein, Rana Kramer, Sherry Levy, Marilyn Loesch, Michael Maller, Barry Maram, Jalisa Matthews, Leah Moskoff, Enrique Neufeld, Noach Ben David, Linda Maram, James O'Neill, Pesach Ben Avraham, Rachel Yisraela Bachaim, Judy Rosenberg, Roberta Rosenfeld, Marty Rudow, Matt Sakharov, Marlene Sampson, Yehuda Sarada, Lois Shapiro, Michelle Slutsky, Sarah Batbacheva, Deborah Sen, Jeff Slowick, Andrea Steinberger, Carrie Ullman, Yocheved Chaya. Are there other names you'd like to mention for healing prayer? Please say them as I look towards you. Those we name aloud, those we hold in our hearts are with us. We ask God to remember them all and bring them after this Shabbat to Rafua Shlema, a recovery of mind and body and spirit. We sing the words of Misha Beirach on page 253. <laughs> designate the third Friday of each month as Tikkun Olam Shabbat, a Sabbath to help in healing the world. And we bring in different speakers thanks to our uh, Tikkun Olam committee here at Macomb Solal Lakeside to help us learn about things that are going on in the world. So it's an honor tonight uh, via Zoom to introduce Anna Sazanov, who was born in the Ukraine to a non-Jewish mother and a father who repressed his Jewish identity. Her family became Ukrainian in every way, which helped them to survive. 
to survive anti-Semitic attacks in the Shoah. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Jewish agency sprang into action, promoting the law of return. This gave on his family the chance to make Aliyah and to start a new life in the Promised Land. Aliyah to Israel allowed Anna to grapple with her Jewish identity in ways that she herself never thought possible. But she uh, is not coming to us all the way from Israel where it's about uh, two or three in the morning, I think. So, but you're here in America, no? That's correct. I just returned this past Sunday to Columbia, South Carolina. So I'm zooming from South Carolina and not all the way from Israel, but um, yeah, maybe next time I will come in person, you know, that to would meet be you fun. all. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much for being here. And we pass the Bima over to you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for allowing me to share my story. Um, I was just, I will jump into it and just a recap what I'm doing, who I am. So my name is Anna Sazanov and you heard my bio today. I'm the executive director of Columbia, South Carolina of the Federation. Um, I'm the youngest executive at all North American communities and I'm the only Israeli and Ukrainian that's leading a federation. That's a great honor. And that's a great honor to be here and speak with you. So you guys celebrating Tikkun Olam Shabbat. And I think what's happening in Ukraine now and our involvement in this, it's this is the fulfillment of Tikkun Olam. And I will share with you through some stories and some pictures on how meaningful Tikkun Olam is and how your actions really changes people's lives. So as you heard, I was born in Ukraine. Um, I was born in a small town, today is a city that's called Berezno. It's on the northwestern side of Ukraine, very close to the border with Belarus and Poland. So the majority of my family is still there. Uh, my extended family is still there. And when the war kicked on February 24th, I was in Colombia. A week before the war, my parents made it back to Israel to safety, but they didn't know that the war will come. The majority of 50% uh, of Ukrainians didn't believe that it's actually going to happen. And as you can see here by my face, it's I recorded a live session on my social media and I start to share my thoughts, my feelings about it, and to really educate others about what's going what's going on in Ukraine and why Ukrainian fighting for the freedom is not only a Ukraine problem, it's our problem, it's the Western world problem. It's a problem for people that's seeking and believing in the values of freedom and democracy. And I start to educate people and to really share from my heart what's happening. But I still question myself, is that enough? Am I doing enough? So Jewish Federation for North America started uh, a crisis fund to support our partner organizations on the ground, such as the Jewish Agency for Israel and the JDC, the Joint Distribution, that basically operating on the borders, also within the borders of Ukraine. So the fund raised over $50 million and still collecting money because there is a lot of work to do. And this is great. And this has really showed the power of peoplehood. Right now in Ukraine, there are about 200,000 Jews that are eligible to make Aliyah to Israel. Twelve thousand of them made Aliyah to Israel already, but many more are still in, in Ukraine. And then I saw those footages and those stories. Right now in Ukraine, there are 10,000 Holocaust survivors. The majority of them are homebound. They don't have the ability to leave. They don't have the ability sometimes to go into shelter and imagine that their homes in is being shelled their buildings are being destroyed. And those footages are from a town very close to Kiev. Those were taken a few days ago by my cousin that drove there by, in, like bike there with his bicycle to show me a little bit of what's going on in the ground, on the ground. And this has made me thinking, am I doing enough for my people, for my brothers and sisters that are in Ukraine, for my extended family, for our family as human beings, because again, this is our responsibility as a Jewish people to help others as well, not only to help the people in our community, but to, pay, to help the larger Jewish community, people out there. 
So I'm very grateful and thankful to work in the Jewish organization that really took it one step forward and say, okay, we have a lot of talented professionals in North America that speak the language, if it's Russian, if it's Ukrainian, and they can really act and help and support on the borders. So I was part of a delegation, the first delegation um, that it's, it's collaboration between the Jewish Agency for Israel, the JBC, and Jewish Federation of North America. And we flew to Poland to support the organizations on the ground and to support Ukrainian refugees. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how it's going to be. I didn't know what my job is going to be like. Nobody really told us what we're going to do because everything is so fluid. Everything is changing every day. Some days the work is 24 seven and some days there's not a lot to do. And then you left by yourself with your thoughts and processing and really going into your soul and really analyzing the horror that those people already have been experiencing. I had the honor and the opportunity to be on the border itself. I was on the border that called Medica. It's a small town in Poland that's right on the border with Ukraine. And I was there day after day for two weeks, standing on the gate of the border and welcoming people. This is few of the food that you, you see right now, people that coming with nothing. Imagine a situation that you have few hours to pack what you have, what you see, get on the bus, get on, on, on volunteering car and drive and get yourself all the way to the border. People cross the borders with bags, with backpacks, with supermarket bags, with nothing. They left their entire life behind in Ukraine. Some of them might go back there. Some of them have the opportunity or, or their house is still there or their apartment is still there, but many of them lost everything. And they're crossing the borders and did not necessarily know what to do and to whom to go and to whom to approach. And you see elderly and you see kids and you see women, brave women that took a backpack, their kids, and crossed and made a long journey. Usually a, a, a drive from Kherson to, to Kiev and then to the border itself can take about, I don't know, eight, 10 hours. Right now it takes between 36 to 48 hours to get all the way to the Western part of Ukraine and to cross the border because the drivers need to avoid the bombing, the shooting, and to have to take some different roads. And every time is a different road, because again, you want to avoid the Russian soldiers that might surprise the boss and basically shoot everybody there. So those people made a long way to get there. And they come into the border and they see us. This is another refugee center. And this is how it looks. It's one of them, it's called Kolchava. There was another two of them in our location that we were responsible for. But imagine that you come to this refugee camp and again, you not necessarily know where you're going, come with your kids, you're by yourself. All you get is a, you know, the volunteers provided with some food, shelter, but you have a huge question mark. What's next? what I'm going to do. And those people have been sleeping in basically military beds for a few days until they will figure out what to do. Some kids, and I'll show you the video again, basically we're playing in the middle of, uh, it used to be a shopping center and the shopping center was adopted. And as you can see, the kids are playing in with nothing in the middle of this abandoned shopping center. I want to share with you some stories about brave people that survived. This is Olena. I met Olena at the doctor's office. I was translating to an American doctor um, from Ukrainian to English, English to Ukrainian. And she's blind. 
She's 84 years old, and she made it from Kherson, from Kharkiv. As you know, and as you've seen the footages probably on the news, Kharkiv, the majority of the city was destroyed. They're in the 80s, and they made their way all the way to the Western parts. The entire conversation with Olena, it was loaded, because I see that they want to start crying. They want to collapse. They want to share. But I cannot allow them to do that because this is not the end of their journey. They just crossed the border and they have a long journey ahead of them. So Olena shared with me that she had a dream. And in her dream, somebody tells her, you will make it until 100. And the entire conversation I had with Olena, and imagine she's blind, crossing the border, doesn't know where she's going. It's the first time ever that she's outside of Ukraine. The entire conversation with her was, Olena, you're going to make it till 100. You and I are going to celebrate your 100th your birthday together in Ukraine. You have to make it. So I'm guiding them. What's their next step to go on the bus, from the bus to a refugee camp, from the refugee camp to another location in Poland? And I have no idea what's next with them. If they made it, they didn't make it. And stories like Olena, we have so many of them. This is Nadezhda. The meaning of the name Nadezhda, it's hope, tikva. Nadezhda is from Kherson. This picture was taken a day before uh, Passover, Erev Pesach. Her daughter, Tatiana, she's living in Israel and she made it back all the way to Ukraine to save her mom and to help her mom to make Aliyah. Nadezhda has a very difficult medical situation and she have, like, she needs to be taken care of a lot. To take her from Kherson in a journey that took 36 hours, we had to collaborate with so many organizations and to make sure that she's crossing the borders in a safe way, the safest way with medical support, with ambulances, with a paramedic with her all the time, and her daughter that holding her hands and making sure that she's coming to safety. And when I talk with that Dejda, one of the things that she was shared with me, that she's so excited to see so many people wearing the flag of Israel. And she was so excited that she's going to celebrate Passover with her grandchildren in Israel. She's going to safety. She's going to her safe heaven. And another picture that was taken, and this is, I think, the greatest moment for me as a Jewish leader, as a community leader, to see so many people from different organizations collaborating together. We had JDC, we had Federation, we had another Christian organization that we all came together to make sure that those people that you see right now in the picture are going to make it all the way to Israel and make Aliyah. And together we can make a difference. And this is the power of peoplehood. And one of the things that I saw on the border is the flag of Israel. And the word Jew, Judaism, Jewish is everywhere. There were more Hebrew and flags of Israel than any other nation, than any other organization. We were there, we were present. And it made me realize that this is our duty as the Jewish people. We are here to serve the highest values of all, the value of tikkun olam. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, you're Jewish, you're helping others. You're helping making this world a better place. I met an amazing group of people that came from Israel and from North America that dropped everything behind their you know, nine to five jobs, their kids, their, their obligation, and they made it all the way to the border in Poland to serve others and to make sure that they're bringing people into safety. Some of the people here in the pictures, they have the stories, their own stories. Some of them saved their families from Ukraine during the time that they were helping others. Those people made sure that this group of people can celebrate 
Passover all together as a one strong community. This picture was taken in Warsaw on Erev Pesach. This, we have about 200 refugees here. And the majority of them, this is the first time ever that they celebrate Passover. And they celebrate Passover all together. A second before they all taking their flights to Israel. And by serving the values of Tikkun Olam, by serving as the Jewish community, to serve the value of peoplehood and the meaning of peoplehood, we can guarantee to have this. This was taken um, a day before I left and a day before the majority of the people that you see in this room made their way to Israel. And that was a powerful moment for me, again, as somebody that then grew up with, her, with a Jewish identity, that discovered her Jewish identity by making Aliyah to Israel. And to really be there and represent the Columbia Jewish Federation and Jewish federations of North America and Jewish communities in North America. And to be there and to serve and to help our brothers and sisters. And this is the moment that I figured and, and I thought to myself was aha moment. That Tikkun Olam, this is the value that makes us stronger as a community and as people. And my biggest message to you, and I will stop showing my screen to see my face. Um, my biggest message to you is that the war is not, is, is still there. We have a lot of things going on and a lot of other news that coming in, but Ukraine is still fighting. And Ukraine is still fighting for all of us, fighting for the values of democracy, fighting for the values of freedom, and I want you to not forget about Ukraine, not forget about those people, and really think about the value of Tikkun Olam and how can you make a difference in the world. Keep Ukraine in your minds, in your hearts, and in your actions. And rabbis, I don't know if we have the time to take questions um, or people can send me their questions. I'll be happy to reply to them and I'll be happy to share some links with you about how can you make a difference? How can you make, support Ukraine and support this crisis? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with us. I want to help you can hear the community. I hope you can hear the community that's gathered here with us tonight. And there are others who are watching from home as well. So thank you so much. And we would love to have uh, links from you um, and uh, wish you peace and freedom as we go forward. We will not forget Ukraine. And thanks to you, that will help us remember. Thank you. And I'm always here. You can follow me on social media. I'm sharing a lot of information there um, on a daily basis. So thank you so much. Have a Shabbat Shalom. And may Shabbat we have Shabbat. peace in the world. Shabbat Shalom. Bye, y'all. If you haven't been here in a few weeks, you're probably wondering about the boxes of cereal on the Bima. So uh, this is how we count the Omer here at Macomb Solo Lakeside. There are 49 days between Passover and Shavuot. And this is the time, according to our tradition, from slavery in Egypt to revelation at Sinai. But it's also the time of the grain harvest in Israel, in ancient Israel and in modern Israel. And so we count uh, an omer as a sheaf of barley. And so we count the grain. So we figured uh, what better way to count the grain than with boxes of cereal and food pantries in our area really like to have cereal to give out, especially this time of year as school is coming to an end. 
because a lot of students who get subsidized breakfast and lunch during the school year may be food insecure over the summer. And so this cereal can go a long way towards helping people. So uh, if you find yourself moved to bring cereal, we are collecting cereal because what we did is on the first day of the Omer, there was one box of cereal up on the Bima. On the second day, we added two more and then three more and so forth. So that tonight in front of the Bima, we have 35 boxes of cereal because this is the 35th day of the Omer, the 35th step on the journey from slavery in Egypt to Revelation at Sinai. The blessing for the Omer is on page 278. <speaking in Hebrew> So this is the 35th day of the Omer, five weeks of the counting of the Omer two weeks to go. And when we're done, hopefully we'll have 1,225 boxes of cereal up here on the Bima to donate to food pantries in our area. And we'll turn now to the closing parts of our service. The Alenu uh, is at the bottom of page 282. Will you stand? Alenu <laughs> Let's turn to those who are no longer with us, those who are beyond, beyond the reach of our hands, but never beyond the reach of our hearts. We mark the death within the last week of Kendra Karasik, wife of Mark, mother of Jack, sister-in-law of Paul. Our hearts are with you. And also this week, the death of Howard E. Zimmerman. We're marking the Shloshim for Alan Barish, Benjamin Blumberg, Jody Friedland and Marilyn Levin. We remember the yard sites this week of Herbert I. Baker, Edward Bazelon, Orville Berkson, Fanny Berlin, Andrea Hoffman Epstein, Hyman Gerstein, Edith Pinsoff Hambler, Sylvia Jacobs Haney, Muriel Goodman Cantor, Florence Merjan, Gary Myers, Abe Millman, Alvin G. Rosen. Francis Lawrence Teller, Jonas Wolfberg, and David Wolf. Does anyone have a name they'd like to add before we say Kaddish tonight? Our griefs and sympathies are mingled as we praise God and pray for the coming of God's peace with the words of the Kaddish Yatom, the Mourner's Kaddish on page 294. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah. 
Vialma de Vra Thiru Te, Viam Lich Malfi Te, Vachaye Chon of Yom Echon, Uvchaye the whole Beit Israel, Bagalau Vizman Kari Vimru Amin. Yeheish me rabam evorach le alam o ome almaya. Yit barach, vishtabach, vit paar, vit ramam, vit nase. Vit adar, vit ale, vit alal, shmeid kudusha briyahu. Leilo min kol birchata vashirata. Tushbehata venehemata. Damiran bi alma vimru amin. Yehe Shlomo Rabba Min Shamaya, Vahai Malenu Vialko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O say Shalom Vimru Mal, Huya Ase Shalom, Alenu Vialko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. Maybe seated. I think we have some announcements. Uh, evening. Oh, a <laughs> Absolutely, we can have a helper. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. I'm Emily Mizell, board member here at Macomb Solel Lakeside. I'm happy to welcome you to our Shabbat service this evening. If this is your first time here or you are new to the community, you can find me after services or anyone with a white name tag. Coming up this weekend, our virtual Shabbat Torah study and morning minion will meet tomorrow morning at 9.15 on Zoom. Join us this Sunday at 10 a.m. for adult enrichment as we welcome Paul Margolis, who will be discussing his stunning black and white exhibit, Israel Impressions. Paul's photos of Israel reflect merchants, fishermen, rock festivals, and other compelling scenes showing the vibrancy of street life. He will conduct a Q&A about his use of film rather than digital, his personal connection to Israel, and his approach to documentary photography. We'll be in person here in the social hall with locks and bagels and on Zoom. You can find the Zoom links for all events in the Macomb at Home newsletter. Sunday is the Macomb Block Party. Come and join us. This is a great community event for all ages with food trucks, music, face painting, and more. Bring your family and friends. Registration is still open and can be found in your Shabbat at Macomb and Macomb at Home newsletter. We hope to see you there. Please take a look at our full calendar of events, including the clergy's classes of, and more. Congratulations to Robin and Todd Weiner on their anniversary, and thank you for sponsoring tonight's own it. Again, we wish you all a Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can't help her. <laughs> Our closing song is Adon Alum, page right. 321. 321. Adon Alam, Hashem Alam,
have a Kiddush cup from our Kiddush cup collection tonight. This one is in memory of Gertrude Silverstein. And as we're about to bless the wine and uh, share the challah, we need to have some people to share it with. So we're delighted to have some of our younger generation here tonight. So if you have not yet had a B mitzvah, we invite you to come up and join us here as we yeah. say the blessings. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's so fun. <laughs> you can use the ramp, you can use the steps, whatever you like. Come on up, come on up. Good. Hey. Come on over, you guys. Thanks, guys. We're going to say this blessing over the fruit of the vine, this blessing over grape juice, and then we can share the challah together. Okay. Now, this is your, your last chance, Arden, to do this before, <laughs> before you become about this with the bar. So thank you for coming up. We say this blessing. And now we have the challah, this braided loaf, which remind us that our lives are intertwined, that we're all fam all family, one family all together. We say this blessing and then we can tear off a piece of challah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.